Hey, welcome everyone. This is part three of our Volkswagen series. If you haven't watched part one and two, I suggest you go back and watch them. But just to quickly get you up to speed, part one, we were diagnosing a high pressure fuel pump code, basically a low pressure concern under, under high load situations. Uh, we swapped out the high pressure fuel pump, stored some data on the lab scope, and uh, the high pressure fuel pump didn't fix it. It was worth a try because I had one sitting from the junk engine. Didn't fix it, the cam lobe is worn. Part three, we are gonna be swapping out the camshaft. Now, I am gonna follow this procedure kind of by the book. There might be some shortcuts you might be able to take if you're experienced working on this two liter BPY. Go ahead and let me know in the comments section. Um, I don't know, according to the book, you have to remove the timing belt. According to the book, you gotta remove the exhaust cam phaser. Um, the reasoning I believe behind that is you don't want any tension on the camshaft itself when you remove that camshaft bridge or the piece that basically has the cam bearings in at the top piece. Uh, you don't want any tension to potentially make that camshaft move or crack or anything like that. So I'm going to follow it pretty much by the book. That means we're looking at a seven plus hour job to r, &R the camshafts on here. So I'm not going to be showing you guys every intricate little step, uh, but I will show you in, in relatively high speed and then also pulling in some, some highlight points um, where necessary. So hopefully by doing it by the book, we're gonna make the powers that be that watch over Volkswagens, uh, we're gonna make them happy because so far I am you know just not having any luck whatsoever and it, it's continuing uh, with the camshaft that came out of the uh, blown engine that's sitting on the floor right over there. Um, the lobes look really good, but the bearing surfaces do not. As you guys can see here in a close-up picture, we do have some pretty decent grooves cut into that bearing surface plenty that I can feel with a fingernail going across across the surface to the point where I don't feel comfortable installing this into this engine doing all this work. So uh, I am actually going to be replacing the intake camshaft on here. With that I have a new intake uh, or uh, high pressure fuel pump follower because uh, I just figured if we're already this deep into it might as well do that right away. I've also ordered up the special tool that's going to hold both the camshafts in place while we work on this thing. So. Um, yeah, it's basically doing it by, by the book on here and we'll, we'll see how it goes. If you guys have tips and tricks for other people on how to do these, great, share them in the comments below. Um, maybe you do these without removing the timing belt. That'd be great to know. I'm gonna remove it just to uh, you know, make sure I don't, don't wreck anything, especially with this exhaust cam. I, I want the exhaust cam to be perfect. I don't wanna have to uh, purchase one of those as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and start getting right into this, start removing everything and uh, yeah, let's get right into it. All right guys, so at this point, I'm ready to take the motor mount off of the passenger side here. Now, before you take the motor mount off, you need to support the engine so that way it doesn't, you know, tip and potentially wreck uh, hoses or wiring or that kind of thing. So I'm gonna take a floor jack and I'm gonna go ahead and support it from the oil pan underneath. It is a, uh, it's an aluminum oil pan, so it'll support the weight of the engine. Uh, we're not gonna have to worry about crushing it like we would maybe like a stamped steel oil pan or something like that. So just go ahead and support the engine with a floor jack. All right, so to get this big honking motor mount off the front of the engine, the engine's gotta be basically uncomfortably high in the engine compartment at this point. Um, I really, really don't like it being this high, but that's what you gotta do to get this out. So disconnect the exhaust, maybe at the turbo or wherever you want to, and then disconnect that, that anti-roll bar that's, that's underneath. Uh, unbolt that as well, and you can get it up this high. 
All right, so with all the timing covers and engine mount and everything out of the way, which by the way was way easier to do on this engine when I had the entire engine on, a, on the uh, stand when it was out of the car, uh, kind of a bear to do in the car. But uh, yeah, everything out of the way, it's time to go ahead and remove tension on the timing belt and pull that belt off of the exhaust camshaft on here. Now just note guys, if you've never done a timing belt job before, you have to make sure that your cranking cams are lined up in their proper place prior to removing tension on it. You wanna make sure that everything is happy and in time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and manually turn the crankshaft on here until our marks are lined up in place where they should be. And you always spin the engine in the direction that it would normally turn. In this case, it's clockwise. So in order to get the crankshaft pulley lined up on here, uh, there's not really any marks behind the cover. So we're gonna go ahead and throw the pulley back on and get it lined up against the cover. And that'll tell us that our crank is in the right spot. And then from here, we'll actually mark the pulley against the, against the uh, oil pump or the block basically. So we'll just set this guy in place. And then the pulley is keyed basically like so. And then from the top, so you're gonna look down at the pulley like this. So there's our timing marks on the, on the camshaft itself. So with the crankshaft now lined up properly against its uh, cover, we're gonna go ahead and pull this off. And then what we'll do is we'll mark a tooth on here for later. So it appears this tooth right here lines up with this dot right there. So we'll use that mark for later. And I guess I'll just mark the top here. I'm not gonna bother marking the belt because the belt's gonna be a different spot, but what I am gonna do, I am actually gonna go ahead and draw an arrow on the belt. So I know which direction to reinstall it so I don't end up having any sort of belt noise or anything like that. Uh, Cause I am gonna be reusing this, this timing belt on here. Okay, so the belt is now um, in its proper location. The cams are in their proper location so we can go ahead and loosen up the tensioner. Now we shouldn't have to pull the tensioner all the way off, I don't think. Should be able to just get it loose and that should relieve tension on our belt enough for us to get it off of the exhaust cam. There we go. And it just popped off the rest of the way. I might as well pull it all the way off so it doesn't get damaged or get any coolant or anything on it. Okay, so the cams are set in time where they should be. So when I get the special tool that actually holds the two camshafts in place with the valve cover and everything off, it should line up perfectly now in theory. Um, so I think that probably is the hardest part of this job. Now it's time to get the, get the old valve cover off. So here's that cam bridge that I was talking about here. This is basically the bearing caps right here for the camshafts. There is a removal process on this uh, on this unit, you want to uh, you want to follow that so we don't possibly wreck a cam. But let's take kind of a kind of a closer look at our at our camshafts here. Um, they don't look horrible. The lobes are nice and clean. There's definitely some varnish in this head, um, which tells me probably a lack of oil changes. And for comparison purposes, here's a picture inside of the head on the old motor. That old motor is looking a lot cleaner inside, but uh, as you, you know, as you saw with the cam, it definitely had its own demons. All right, guys, so my special tools are here to be able to get this job apart the right way. Uh, first of all, you're gonna need a number 10 poly drive socket. I just picked this thing up uh, online. It's listed here as a VW Audi camshaft adjuster socket, uh, but it's a number 10 poly drive, uh, kind of like a Torx, except a, a little bit different. And that's gonna take off our, our camshaft phaser here on our exhaust cam, that'll go right into there and we'll be able to loosen that phaser up and take it off of the, the camshaft. But we can't go ahead and loosen that until we lock the cams in place. And unfortunately on here, um, it would probably be frowned upon to throw a vice grip on the camshaft and, and hold it that way. Um, there's no wrench lobes or anything to hold the cams in place. So there is this special tool. I picked up this brand, a, 
Uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. Eh, Schwaben, Schwaben, whatever. Um, pick this up through ECS Tuning uh, if you're looking for this special tool. I did some research on these things and there are um, some good quality ones and there's some not so good quality ones. Now by the looks of it, as we go ahead and insert this onto the head, it should line up perfectly with the valve cover bolts and the cams should be locked in place. Um, not a lot of play in here. I guess we'll know once, once it comes time to actually turn the camshaft how much play we actually have, but this is gonna lock our cams in place so we can go ahead and loosen that guy up. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this tightened down. Um, if you're looking for this tool, I'll, I'll put a link below to ECS tuning. I'm sure it's available all over the place. This is just where I happened, happened to pick it up from. Um, you could get the special Volkswagen tool, what, whatever you wanna do. But uh, yeah, let's get that tightened down with a Torx. Now I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna run this down super tight. I'm just gonna run it snug because I believe that should be enough to hold. Just snug like so. And then what I'm gonna do here is take the chain and I'm gonna pinch it together, the tensioner, get all that oil pressure out of there. And then I have just a, this is just a timing chain tensioner pin that I have from a different job that I did. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to insert that into here to hold our tensioner down. And then we'll be able to take this chain off once we, once we take this pulley off. They kind of come off together. The pulley, or excuse me, the phaser is intended to come off with the chain. So we'll leave the intake cam in there as we take the, the phaser off. Now this is a half inch drive socket. I'm not sure if we're gonna need the full power of a half inch breaker bar, but let's see. Is it possible it's reverse threaded? It doesn't seem to be. Oh, there it goes. That was a lot tighter than I had anticipated. So this should Pull right off the end of the cam. So there we go. There's our phaser. You can see that it's got a keyway or a pin right here so it can only go onto the camshaft in one position, uh, which is nice. But we're gonna go ahead and uh, take this guy off, and off of the old engine because uh, I really don't like all the scoring and everything that we're seeing on here. Remember this, this was actually worn into the cap itself. So again, guys, I'm not sure exactly what caused this phaser to wear ridges and grooves into the into its cap, um, unless something unless something were stuck in there, because as you can tell here, maybe you can tell. I don't know. Maybe kind of hard to tell, but uh, there's a pretty good clearance between those two surfaces. I mean, if we take a thin blade screwdriver, I mean, I can easily easily fit that between those those two surfaces so something for, for the camshaft to have that much play for this thing to hit the cap uh this engine would be catastrophically damaged internally um it would not be it, it wouldn't be running for this to have this much play my theory i guess has to be that that something got stuck in between the surface of of this phaser and its its outer shell here and it, that just ended up grinding into there somehow i i don't know um, this engine definitely had, had issues, but both of these, this, this piece here and the, the phaser itself are going to be replaced using the, the components from the, from the old engine. Okay. So with the phaser off, we should be able to pull our chain off really easily. Beautiful. Um, the chain is varnished a little bit, but I don't see anything majorly wrong with it. Again, I'm probably going to use the chain from the other engine. It did look like it was in better overall shape. All right, so here's our chain tensioner. I'll have to grab the bolt that I dropped here. Uh, but you can see we have the pin inside of there to hold it hold it down. Uh, there's a spring that's inside of the shaft that when we release the pin, it'll obviously put tension against the belt and then, or against the chain, excuse me. And then it's also fed oil pressure. So, ooh. Well, that was a metal shaving that I just dropped. Look at that. That is never fun to look at inside of a motor. 
I believe this guy right here would be part of that cover that we <laughs> that was ground down. Oh, also, on the back side of this guy right there, there's a small screen. As you can tell, it is also full of metal shavings as well. Uh, I may be pulling the oil pan off of this motor. So right there are shavings, and I'll take a close-up picture for you guys. Okay, so at this point, I believe we are all ready to go to go ahead and pull off the uh, top half of the cam bearings. So all of these bolts are going to come out. We'll take this guy back out here because I don't think we need to hold our camshafts in place anymore because everybody is loose. We'll probably need to use this later during the reinstallation process. Okay, so for removing the camshaft guide frame or camshaft bridge or whatever you want to call it, uh, the procedure simply states to work from the outside inwards. Um, so we're going to just kind of work diagonally across and then eventually probably these four right here will be the last four to come out. All right guys, so for a general rule of thumb when trying to take something off, it'd be a good idea to have, you know, all of the bolts out before you go trying too hard. Uh, this little piece right here is actually, has a small little like key tab that goes into the top cover. So, um, yeah, uh, so yeah, that has to come out. And it looks like it's gonna be a bear to get out because the bolt for it is right down there, which may involve Removing the intake manifold. Let's hope not. So it's a triple square. So I think the angle is going to be way too great here to get this guy, get this guy out. Now this is nothing more than a piece that's going to hold the top air filter assembly on. Um, and Unless anybody's got a really tiny short triple square where the where the bolt is going to come out, no matter what, even if I get it loose, it looks like it's going to be hitting the plastic of the intake manifold. Now, I don't really, I don't really want to have to remove the intake manifold if I don't have to. So let's see if we can't just do a little bit of tweaking. Get that locking tab out of this top half. So, uh, a little bit of manual tweaking on this guy to get the locking tab out of there, and uh, we don't have to pull the pull the bolts out. And now we have a lot more room to work. All right, now it appears that we're stuck on this plate right here that sits behind the camshaft. They can't just make it easy. So special tools going back on. I'm going to go ahead and pull off this uh, exhaust cam bolt. All right, you'll see that I didn't really tighten those down all the way. I just snugged them so that we have enough to hold this cam in place so I can hopefully knock this bolt loose. All right, I can feel some movement of the bolt. There we go. So just standard thread, not reverse thread on this cam. Okay. Sweet. So there's proof that you can get the cam guide, bridge, whatever, caps. You can get it out without pulling this pulley off. Um, we may still need to pull it off to replace this cam seal that's sitting here, but we can take the camshaft out of the engine and put it in the press uh, to get that pulley off potentially. So this guy's out. Definitely some grooves worn into our cam bearing surfaces here. All right, there's our intake cam. All right, so the camshafts are out. Intake cam has some definite scoring on it uh, to the point where I can feel it with my fingernail here. Um, probably not as bad as what the, the blown engine had been, um, but there's definitely 
definitely some scoring. And really that just, uh, I guess it doesn't really surprise me too much uh, based upon the way this engine has looked so far. And actually the, where I'm, I really get nervous on this engine is once the, once the exhaust cam came out and uh, we take a good close look at this, we have some very, very scored bearing surfaces. I don't feel good. I don't feel good about this, guys. I, I don't feel good about these these bearing surfaces where this camshaft's gonna ride, and I don't plan on owning this car forever, um, but that's, that's not my plan. Um, I wouldn't feel good about putting this back together as it sits uh, with a new camshaft, new seals, that kind of thing, and eventually selling it to, to someone down the road, knowing what I know about this engine so far. So, with that said, guys, I had a, just got off the phone, uh, had a very, very good conversation with the, um, the place that I bought this used engine from, from Diamond Auto Parts in, in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. I spoke with Jim there, and uh, I, I gave him the rundown of, of everything that I was running into on this engine. I had spoke with him last week about it, that I was going to be installing a camshaft and, uh, you know, doing all of that stuff. And he was generous enough to go ahead and give me some money back on this engine because of the money that I was having to stick into it. I spoke with him again today, explaining and, and showing him my documentation of the uh, scoring of the camshafts and that kind of thing, and of the, the obvious abuse that this engine has seen. And he was very, very generous that he is willing to take this engine back, even though I'm not within my, my warranty period. He has been uh, incredibly generous. So. At this point, guys, it's it's kind of me, uh, you know, throwing in the towel on, on this engine. I don't feel good about moving forward, putting a brand new camshaft into a motor that is uh, not not up for it. Um, I, I have this this funny gut feeling that if I were to do that, put a brand new camshaft in, put the new follower on, all that stuff, I have a funny feeling that shortly down the road, I will run into problems with, with this engine. Um, Camshaft bearings just aren't in good shape. Who knows what the crank bearings look like? The turbo is noisy on here, guys. This motor was not taken care of. So at this point, um, I guess this is gonna be pretty much the end of the third part of the series here, guys. I'm gonna go ahead, I have to reassemble this engine here uh, to get it back to the junkyard. They want it, they want it uh, fully assembled. And then I'm going to be pulling it out of the vehicle and they're gonna be getting this engine back. They're gonna be getting the core engine and they're going to be giving me a uh, new used uh, engine that they have actually it's sitting in a car right now so they're gonna be they're gonna get, be giving me that engine and I'm gonna go ahead and throw that in here and, and then we're gonna do a part four once I have the new used engine fully installed um, I still want to capture that that data off of a known good engine so um, before I install that engine I will be inspecting the high pressure fuel pump follower before I go ahead and stick a bunch of time and labor into that new engine so um, for those of you that were hoping to see this thing go back together or were looking for the specs and that kind of thing, I'm going to throw some images up on the screen here, guys, for some torque specs and sequences and that kind of thing so that if you were following along here to be able to put this back together, you're just going to follow the exact procedure I did to tear it apart, throw it back together, make sure you torque everything down properly. I know at this point that I have cam bearing damage and I'm just not willing to uh, try and, I mean, It'd be almost $500 worth of parts into this engine for a new camshaft, all the seals, the tools, special tools that I had to buy. It just wasn't worth it. And luckily, again, Diamond Auto Parts was, was willing to help me out, take care of me, and get me a new engine. There's a link below to their website, guys. They do ship nationwide. So if you're looking for used parts, um, this is a one-off, guys. This is not something they intentionally sold me. That's bad. Things happen when dealing with used parts. Unfortunately, they were uh, willing to, to take care of me and, and really help me out. So I can't say thank you enough to them. And guys, I am going to begin ripping this engine out, putting it back together, putting the core engine back together. And I'm not, I'm not going to show the documentation of that just because it's going to be a long, drawn-out process. But at the end of the day, hey, the vehicle should be properly running next time you guys see it in part four. So I really appreciate you watching. I hope you understand the direction that I've taken here. I'd be interested to know your thoughts. Would you have put a new intake cam in this put it all back together and, and ran it out the door if this was a customer car, if this were your own car, how would you guys treat this situation? Again, this is my own car and I've done things a little bit differently than what maybe you would do on a customer car and what I would do on a customer car. I wouldn't have tried 
the high pressure fuel pump the first time. I wouldn't have sold a customer a high pressure fuel pump and, and follower uh, the first time with the with the old camshaft. I would have suggested all of that up front. But uh, being that it was my own car, it made sense to try it because I had what was assumed to be a known good sitting on the on the old engine. Now we are without known good parts. We have a engine that has issues. So again, let me know what you guys think. What would you have done in this situation? So thank you so much everyone for watching. If you enjoyed this part three of the series, please give me that thumbs up. If you aren't already subscribed to the channel, please click on the subscribe button and click on the little bell icons. That way you can be notified when part four comes out. I'm not sure if part four is gonna come out uh, one week from today or maybe two weeks from today or maybe there'll be a video in between. It just depends on, on the workload here and what I have going on um, in terms of getting the job done, getting the engine from them, which is still currently sitting in the car um so we'll just see when part four comes out if you have your notifications turned on you'll see it and you'll be able to see hopefully the conclusion to our volkswagen saga that we're dealing with on this two liter bpy engine so again thank you all for being there and as always everyone happy wrenching thank you